everyone. I'd like to thank the commission, the committee, first of all. I, I really appreciate your you being here today. I'm Francisco Serafin, a PhD student from the University of Trento, and I'm here to introduce you to my PhD work, Enabling Modeling Frameworks with Surrogate Modeling Capabilities and Complex Networks. <coughs> So what we're going to see today is basically the first part. It uh, is part of my research proposal. So uh, the motivations behind this research, problem statement, context, background, objective, and relevance. And then since uh, we, I figured that there were two problems that are anyway connected, I'm going to uh, introduce you the two main topics, fans, framework enabled need based surrogate modeling and NATRI, complex network based physical modeling. And then going through uh, both uh, research questions, methodological approach, technical approach, approach and implementation and application of future work. So what's the problem statement? Um, the idea is uh, a physical, um, conceptual and physical models are a very, very important part of everyday life in problem solving. Uh, and in order to make them more accurate day by day, uh, we, uh, mm, mm, we try to describe the nature of phenomena more accurately. <coughs> this made the uh, um, physically based uh, model more complex, and very actually complex. And, and this, this, as a result, research organizations and both service delivery organization had a very, have a very difficult approach in using uh, in, in, in using physically based model. The approach are different uh, since research organizations needs to develop, maintain the models, and of course, what they need is to apply them to state of our uh, problems. On the other side, service delivery organization they need like a very very uh, I don't I would say kind of lightweight use of physically based models. So. Uh, digging into the two different situations here, uh, problems with respect to research organization are model maintenance and development, modeling creativity constraints because actual model kind of constrain the uh, model creativity and talent, and the application to state of our problems, which are made difficult by a number of reasons. The requirements are easy model development and maintenance flexibility and simplified use. With respect to service delivery organization, the problems are uh, service delivery organization usually don't have in a house uh, thorough, uh, people that can thoroughly understand the inner part of the model, so they kind of want to use like the model as a black box. Uh, they don't have time and capabilities sometimes to collect data and prepare data to properly feed conceptual and physically based model, and they have runtime management because they need maybe a, a very uh, quick uh, answer, accurate enough. So their requirement, again, are simplified modeling solution, accurate enough results, and quick answer to specific questions. So, um, why these two, pro these, these two problems can, can can like look like a, a separated, not not really interconnected. But the thing is, there are, there are the there are always being a strong communication and collaboration between these two worlds that historically featured in research advancement and modeling goal achievements. So, mm -hmm. since conceptual and physically based models are in between, and this is the actual state of art of modeling a solution, uh, we figure that we need to work on this actual setup. So this is why this dissertation identifies in environmental modeling framework the suitable layer for accommodating research and consultant <coughs> requirements. The state of art, today's state of art, is the encapsulation of conceptual physical model in uh, framework compliant components to simplify model development, maintenance, and we'll see later on, into, uh, uh, into frameworks, environmental modeling framework in this specific case. Uh, as a result, that's where we're going to work. So, these are well-known problems. It's not like, okay, we found the problem. No, these are well-known problems. 
Um, so something has been done already in the past. The thing is, of course, as a research go on, we can definitely do more. So the first uh, the first, the very first, first point with respect to research organization is object-oriented pro programming. We already moved from monolithic uh, software uh, it, uh, toward object-oriented programming. And the natural evolution was environmental modeling framework and cloud computing platforms. So this uh, modeling solution has been developed by Dr. Bankeri during her PhD program is a water budget. And as we can see, the, the feature, the, 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 the most important part here is we can identify physical processes and encapsulate, develop them as a, as a, as a, as a software into one single component. This allows us, first of all, to easily develop, test, and maintain that software. And for our research point of view, it's really important. We can also publish one paper per component, which is important. And as well, we can uh, then test the entire modeling solution and uh, publish again the mo modeling solution altogether. From a service delivery organization point of view, again, environmental modeling framework and cloud computing platforms were really helpful uh, when it comes to speed up the computation because they take care of scalability and parallel programming problems. Um, big databases set up, so we, we, we try to overcome problems, they try to overcome problems with respect to data preparation and collection using big databases, but you create dependencies, so the model doesn't work anymore without all the dependencies. And uh, some complexity reduction models have been used already, like projection-based, uh, like uh, multi-fidelity, but still the, you need to work a lot to create that surrogate model. So this kind of, this, this schema represents the historical evolution. We started from a model with different shape. Okay, so um, a user approached, uh, used to approach every model in a different way because of the different input output standard, because of the different complexity. Uh, the use of framework uh, or a cloud computing platforms allowed to encapsulate um, every um, every model into um, into a microservice or into a framework compliant components. This facilitates definitely the approach to the to the model, but um, I mean long run time is still required, and uh, the amount of data it's still an issue. So this dissertation. So M aims to address and alleviate two aspects of research model complexity. The first one is model design complexity with respect to internal software structures. So we want to work on research organization side to make the model development and maintenance uh, easier, uh, especially when it comes to complex modeling solution. Uh, and we are going to do this through a graph modeling structure, the integration of a graph modeling structure into an environmental modeling framework. With respect to service delivery organization, we want to work on model application complexity. So uh, with respect to data parameter setup, runtime requirement, and model infrastructure setup. So we are going to create a surrogate modeling capabilities. We are going to integrate surrogate modeling capabilities into, com uh, into the the cloud computing platforms in order to automatically emerge a surrogate model of um, a physical, conceptual physical model, specific part of a conceptual physical model. So the relevance of this research with respect to Net3 is definitely model flexibility. So uh, we can definitely elevate encapsulation and reusability with respect to scientific and mathematical code base and we can easily switch modeling solution. And uh, one, another important aspect is we can definitely tailor the modeling solution. Why? Um, this watershed is a big watershed and we can model the entire watershed with the water budget. Marie Laura has uh, developed uh, that water budget. The thing is we have mountain catchments here. We've got plain catchments, we've got hills catchments. So if we split that watershed into sub-catchments, sub and we, we go to 
catchment, sub catchment but by sub catchment and redesign the modern the proper modern solution uh, to describe the physical processes acting there we can definitely tailor a modeling solution to that specific problem so try to get to more accurate modeling solution uh, and then uh, because of topological connection and other stuff we can uh, also parallelize entire computation and make the computation faster from a service delivery organization point of view um, we're going to use data driven uh, model uh, data driven uh, surrogate models because need so neuroevolution of romantic topology is a, 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 a neuroevolutionary algorithm that allows to uh, generate uh, the neural nets during the training phase, and this allows us to automatically merge the surrogate model. Uh, and it's the first application of need in environmental modeling uh, topics. Uh, again, it, we can integrate the entire um, um, generation of surrogate models at the framework level and require no user or little user interaction. So as we can see with, with a kind of historical point of view, the goal here is to have the models, the, 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 the complexity of the model um, basically the same for each model. We can emulate just one part or, or specific parts of the model, of course, and the encapsulation into a nanoservice or microservice allows the user to approach every uh, surrogate model in the same way. So with respect to fence, service delivery organization, the research questions are, can we sufficiently duplicate the behavior of, the behavior of relevant conceptual or physical models with abstract generic implementation of surrogate models? How can we properly split the input data set in order to emulate models behavior more accurately? How can we improve surrogate model results accuracy and provide strong support in the decision making process? So this research has been driven by the idea of automatically generate surrogate model at the framework level and generate a surrogate model in a way that we can try to support the decision making process, which is always important by uncertainty quantify the uh, surrogate model. The methodologies here are neuroevolution of mental topology need, feature selective need, ensemble of surrogate models, and uncertainty quantification. If we package all together, we end up having framework enabled need based surrogate model fence. Need and FS need. Uh, need is as an evolutionary algorithm, so basically evolves both topology and weight of an artificial neural network during supervised learning. Uh, this means that when you start the training phase, you have input neurons, input layer, output layer, and output neurons. You have all, the, all of them are interconnecting, and then the neuroevolutionary algorithm, which is based on a stochastic uh, procedure, randomly add um, new neurons and new, a new connection between neurons, and also perturbs the weight of the, of the connection. Uh, this allows for keeping the search space and the connection weight at its minimum. And also it was, uh, was a very important at that time because it overcame some constraint for uh, in the neuroevolutionary um, um, neuroevolutionary environment. Uh, with respect to FSNEED, FSNEED is simply a, an additional feature. Um, um, uh, basically uh, what it does is uh, when we say that all the input neurons are connected to the output neurons, we're saying, okay, we need all these inputs, but do we really need all these inputs? We may not need all them because they might actually decrease the learning performance or even impede learning. So what FSNEED does, it begins with uh, one connection between input and output, and then attempt to, attempts to connect all the other outputs to the, uh, all the other inputs to the, other, to the outputs and, uh, and prune out useless input if they don't uh, facilitate the learning process. So uh, the next methodology is the ensemble of surrogate models. Here, uh, basically, uh, because of the stochasticity involved in the neuroevolutionary algorithm, uh, if you feed the, the training process with the same input output, you end up having slightly different neural nets. Uh, so um, as a result, 
all the near, all neural net, all trained near, neural nets are capable of emulating that specific part of the conceptual physical model. So uh, how can we choose which one we want to uh, keep? Mm, instead of choosing, the idea is, since we have to split the, 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 the data set in training and validation data set, why don't we start several training and we randomly split training and validation data set uh, making sure uh, that, that the probability distribution of the data is, is the same as the original entire data set. In this way, we end up having different neural nets capable of emulating the, 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 the original model behavior uh, and the ensemble itself of the neural net uh, is supposed to see the entire data set. So we can definitely use all the snapshot, input output snapshot we have available. And this is the concept we are in behind um, mm -hmm. ensemble of surrogate models. The framework integration part is the, the, is the final part. So we use, we leverage all these uh, methodologies to try to integrate everything at the framework level. So uh, we start with input-output, collecting, harvesting input-output uh, of physical model, original model. And then when we have a, 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 a good amount of data, we can trigger the training and training a bunch of neural nets. We end up having an example of neural nets. And when uh, they are accurate enough, we can, uh, we can replace the, 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 the answer for that specific question to the physically based model with the ensemble of surrogate models. And because we are querying all the neural nets, we end up having a certainly quantified uh, result. Technical approach, uh, very quickly, CSAP OMS, OMS is the environmental modeling framework, object modeling system. Uh, CSAP is the cloud computing platform. They work together tightly together, uh, MongoDB, because it's a known SQL database, and for this specific purpose, it's, it's way better than an SQL database. Uh, NCOG3 is the machine learning framework uh, we used. Um, there are a bunch of things we, we can definitely do to improve the machine learning, but it's already very solid, and uh, for, for the very beginning, is a, is a great tool. This is the framework integration, the technical part of the framework integration. So we have basically the user, the model service here uh, to basically trap the JSON request and JSON response, which is the way basically user interact with the model service. We create a, 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 a proxy, a proxy service in between, which takes care of parsing input output and then sends the relevant <coughs> parameters to Defends ESM, which is a kind of back end set of services, a uh, set of nano microservices, uh, to um, basically trigger the collection, the training, the, the, the normalization of the data, training, and, and so on. Uh, this is a fence ESM, so the collection of services. We have five microservices data collection, data normalization, training phase plus validation, statistical analysis, and uncertainty quantification, rounds plus, and round plus uncertainty quantification. Uh, the, I'd say the most uh, relevant here is the training phase plus validation. Uh, so we trigger the training of a bunch of neural nets uh, that basically uh, retrieve data from we validate all of them. And since the neuroevolutionary algorithm sometimes doesn't get to your proper, uh, proper training, we select only the, 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 the training ones. We select them, we store them, and uh, we, can def we can definitely store <coughs> the entire neural net into a database. So uh, it's uh, super quick to retrieve the neural net when the user uh, um, ping the, the, the run service retrieve the neural net, query all of them, and we get uncertainty quantified results <coughs> back. So application results. Uh, this first application is Russell 2, a revised universal Solos equation. 
It allows for uh, estimating potential erosion rate, um, dive conservation and erosion control planning and sediment production. The problem here with Rasser 2 are several input parameters, calibration procedure, a, a seamless access to database of about 300 gigabytes. So we'd like to create a tool here that we can detach from uh, the entire cloud computing system and run with quick and accurate accurate enough results on the field if necessary. So we tried to uh, emulate the potential erosion rate. That was our target. We worked in Iowa with crop rotation, corn and soybeans, a few counties. So we started with two counties, counties only, sorry, uh, uh, about 6,700 samples. Um, with constant field length, with varying steepness, uh, different land management, different soil types. Uh, I worked on uh, data clustering because this allows to create expert modules um, and um, basically make the training faster and uh, the results more accurate because you create a, a, a smaller subset of the entire input space. And the results were <coughs> pretty accurate, I'd say, with uh, an ash shot cliff uh, above uh, 0 0.98. The second application was, again, in Iowa, but uh, a, larger a la larger study area. So Buena Vista, Clay County, Cherokee, and Wright counties, varying field length, varying steepness, different land management, different type of soils, biomass as well to account for different crop field. Um, again, worked on um, clustering, data clustering in this case, in this specific case, work on clustering on the output data. So trying to forecast if the erosion was high or low erosion rate and enable the proper uh, expert module. And the gate was, even if it was a, a very very quick attempt, the gate was pretty, uh, pretty accurate. So it was, let's say wrong, only uh, 14 times over uh, 9,700 times. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty accurate. And uh, Nash shot cliff again above 0 0.97. The last uh, application was AGES, uh, hydrological model, is capable of estimating water quantity, water quality, and nutrient processes interactions. So the problem with AGES is that it requires uh, distributed geomorphological data, distributed climate data. Uh, soil management practices, so we try to create um, a surrogate for that specific watershed only, of course. So we try to emulate the, um, uh, the water quantity at the outlet of the watershed. Uh, South Fork Iowa River, again in Iowa, uh, more or less same areas we, we, we studied with. Uh, Russell too, uh, 3,000 HRUs, tide drainage on uh, almost 2,000 HRUs and crop rotation again corn and soybeans. Uh, 5,200 daily, 5,300 daily time steps uh, as a, as a uh, data set. Um, seven, seven free lamp input parameters. Uh, so that means that uh, since we had one input parameter per HRU, what we did, what we did, what we did is simply averaging all the input in this in this way, we end up with one single parameter. And um, today's precipitation input to today's leaf area index, today's potential evapotranspiration, the variation of snow depth between yesterday and today, uh, yesterday run water, yesterday soil saturation, and yesterday runoff to predict today uh, uh, water uh, quantity. Um, and the results were pretty accurate considering the amount of data we are using. It's anyway 097. Future work. For sure, data clustering is, uh, is an important part of this, of this um, type of research because it's without the trainings, make the, the, the cluster more uh, accurate, and there are a bunch of uh, different things I'd like to work on. Bayesian regularization to basically smooth uh, the behavior of the neural net because it's not part of NEAT yet. I'd like to improve NEAT algorithm because the numbering of uh, nodes, connection and nodes is not very efficient. So there is a paper uh, who's talking about that. Um, 
And uh, design computation and scalability because uh, uh, NCOV3 is great, but it's multi-threaded only, and we can definitely use uh, more uh, machine. So research question with respect to NetRace. So research organization this time. Uh, what is the best strategy to simplify development and run of conceptual physical model? What is the more suitable software core to expand and make more flexible? What is the proper way to fasten computational time of complex model without requiring researchers to develop any specific part of software development skill? I'd say all of them are key because really we need to have more complex modeling solution tailored fit, uh, but uh, we cannot ask a researcher who's, who's working on the modeling of natural processes to develop a parallel software programming skills, it's, it's not possible and it's, it's, not, it's not fair. So that's what we want to do with, with we want to achieve with this graph modeling structure. So the, the idea of this research is simplifying, again, development of complex modeling solution and run of complex modeling solution, improve flexibility in order to accommodate modelers' creativity and talent, because as well explained in my dissertation, actual modeling solution are state of art but still limit modular creativity and reducing computational time as well. So the methodologies <coughs> here are the object modeling system, a cyclic directed graph data structure, and implicit parallelism. We package all together and we end up having a metric. The approach is very easy, but I think it's an uh, easy idea but really, really relevant. So. The, on, the, uh, on the left side, we have the actual state of art, OMS, uh, the framework, and the modeling solution. So what OMS does, it allows the developer to encapsulate a physical process into a single component, and then basically the, the, the framework takes care of interconnecting them. And actually, in this specific case, since these two um, components are unrelated, the framework take care of running them in parallel. So we have already a layer of implicit parallelization. But again, thinking about, uh, in this case, let's, let's, let's think about a mini hydropower. Okay, so we've got the river, okay, and we've got the mini hydropower plant. So we might want to model or monitoring the performance of the mini hydropower plant. So how can we do, how can we run a, a, a water budget upstream and downstream and mini hydropower on, on, on the side. So this is the idea of the graph modeling structure and this uh, schema is perfect for this example. Since if we see here the river and this is the mini hydropower plant, what we can do is up here we can run water budget, Marilara developed, and we can run the water budget here as well. But this part, which is like the derivation, uh, we might want to monitor, it, monitor the water level because we, need, we want to keep the minimum amount of water to preserve the natural life. Uh, so we need to run a specific type of model here. This is the mini power plant. So we have intake, outtake, and we might want to monitor the performance of the hydropower plant. Um, so in this way we can, every node can encapsulate a different modeling solution and since they all of them uh, communicate because we are moving water, um, the graph modeling structure uh, takes care of interconnecting all the nodes together. And again, because these two nodes are independent and not, not related, the graph modeling structure take, takes care of implicitly parallelizing the, comp the computation. Thus, we end up having two layers of implicit uh, parallelization. OMS on top, and the graph modeling structure underneath. So uh, the technical approach, object modeling system, we briefly talked about that. Um, it allows to encapsulate uh, the, the um, physical processes in each component. This makes software development way, way easier because everything is bundled there. You know where it is, you know where you have to work on. You can actually replace every piece of software, like that specific component, you develop a new one, you can replace that specific part uh, the, um, within the modeling solution, and not the entire modeling solution itself. Um, 
it's great to parameterize and evaluate the model in the models since you can definitely write unit tests per component and making sure that you are actually um, test properly testing each component and elevate uh, science community collaboration. Uh, the acyclic directed graph data structure is a graph data structure. So it's a very simple uh, and basic graph data structure, but it becomes super useful mm -hmm. and uh, in this specific case, so a graph is a set of vertices and edges, and then every edge connect a pair of vertices only. is directed. That means that you have one, one way only from one uh, from one vertex to the other, and this is cyclic. Uh, that means that there are no loops in the topology. This is actually a limitation. Of thinking about bigger hydropower plant where we. Uh, basically use the water during the day to generate electricity and maybe during the night because electricity is cheaper we pump back the water up in the upstream reservoir so mm -hmm. loops are really important here uh, I'm thinking I have an idea on how to implement that because I'd like to develop like a multi-layer uh, graph because otherwise it's kind of hard to, to take care of everything in one single uh, graph, so I'm, I'm working on this. Uh, it's been pretty hard already to integrate the graph modeling structure into, into MS. It was, a, was not easy and straightforward, but seems working uh, okay right now. And uh, of course, in place of parallel design. This first application is Dr. Dr. Pankeri, uh, part of the uh, uh, Professor Rigon's uh, research group. Um, is an application in uh, South Italy, so in Basilicata. Uh, this is actually the uh, application we used to develop uh, Nantri. So she started splitting the entire watershed in about 160 HRUs and uh, running the water budget per each HRU. But of course, we need again to tailor the modeling solution per uh, single HRU. So we've got parameterization for HRU. Uh, parallel computation and multi-site calibration. This is key in this specific um, application because, uh, for example, in this in this part of the entire watershed, we have a, uh, we have a runoff information at this point here, and we have runoff information at this point here. So we might want to calibrate this upstream part with uh, one specific set of data. And then we might want to block the, the parameter set here and calibrate the rest of the watershed with a different set of parameters. Uh, Netri allows that. Allows that. The problem is it's not parallel because that type of parallelization is not is not easy. So like independent branch and calibrate uh, concurrent independent branch is not is not easy. But it's one of the things I definitely want. The other application is Mr. Della Torre uh, masterwork. Uh, so what Daniele did is basically started from a swim, he extracted the runoff part and the routing part, and um, taking advantage of net three capabilities, we tried to uh, scale as much as possible the computation, so we encapsulated in, in, in an implicit way. So we encapsulated, uh, he encapsulated actually the runoff and the routing in different nodes. And with respect to uh, JSWIM, he had it, the dimensioning model, so you can verify the network and design the network as well. And this way, since runoff is a pretty quick computation, the computation of the runoff runs independently from the routing part and then the routing part go, go around. Um, uh, Kind of a, a few features here. Uh, uh, Natri uh, um, JStream requires access to a single data structure, so each node of the um, Natri can access concurrently, so read concurrently the same data structure. But of course, when it comes to write to the data structure, you kind of can kind of screw up a little bit, so you need to queue all the threads and making sure that they are writing in the proper way. Um, and um, uh, yeah, the, the Daniele is actually working on one uh, additional important feature because uh, he's just extending the DSL. So we are trying to 
kind of limit the number of parameters and components you have to manually write into the DSL, the OMS DSL, to make the, the development and run uh, faster. But I don't want to go into detail because Daniel is going to defend his master work pretty soon, so uh, we'll see the, the details of this pretty soon. Uh, this is the test case, the Fosoro network. Uh, and uh, one additional thing, uh, Natri allows each node to uh, access uh, a specific sub-branch in order to calibrate the, 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 sti the not the steepness, but the, the depth of every node of the network while you are dimensioning, uh, designing the network, of course. The last application has nothing to deal with hydrology, and that's the beauty because this demonstrates the flexibility of NAT3, the, the potential of NAT3. Um, this is a system of system models, it's a urban model, uh, basically like a post-war um, situation where people need, you need to study the, the, the access, people's access to a water facility rather than fuel facility. Uh, you need to run a bunch of uh, urban models, so there are different models and uh, the, the features of Natri allows for running different models written in different languages all together. Uh, this modeling solution has uh, Java, C, Python and R uh, models all together and run all together, run these models all together. Um, each node here, as we can see, that the, the feature is we can really bundle, okay, the, the, that little part of the model and take care of that node, uh, the modeling solution in that node. Or in this case, we have different loops, and this is the, the, the good part of, uh, of uh, an act three that takes care of interconnecting all of them. The thing is, these, these models uh, are um, agent-based models, so they have stochasticity involved. Again, so you need to run them several times, create a bunch of realization, and then study the range of possible. So this is a graph modeling structure, though. So what, what can we do? The only thing is to create a graph of graphs. So what Net3 allows is to run nested Net3. Every, every node of the graph data structure can run a graph data structure. Uh, the problem is here, since uh, Nat3 wasn't designed thinking of this possibility. I have memory, memory management issues. So the realization are sequential only, are not uh, parallel, but I have to work anyway on um, the scalability to make a Nat3 scalable. So I take care of this problem, making sure that everything can run uh, independently and uh, if it's if the topology that is this is the 5 PCI developed by uh, Dave Patterson and other David. Um, future work, scalability for sure. DSL flexibility, Daniela started this and uh, we are definitely working on this. Improve memory management and improve the design of enabling disabling computational branches because you might wanna like, enable a part of the Computation or disabled part of the computation, depending on modeling solution. So, conclusion, and then almost done. There are gaps between research organization and conceptual physical model and service delivery organization and conceptual physical models. So, we try to close this gap, extending EMFS functionalities. So, FANS framework enabled need based surrogate model demonstrate an opportunity for service delivery organization to consolidate and streamline model delivery. Surrogate models are accurate enough. The integration with the frameworks allow to automatically generate the surrogate models in a controlled environment and then provide an easy to use uh, tool and small uh, tool. The certainty quantified results allow to, uh, have a, 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 to improve the estimate accuracy, actually. And these are just a few numbers, so uh, 10 neural nets are just 80 kilobytes in size and run pretty quickly, while RASU2 requires uh, 300 gigabytes of uh, databases. With respect to NAT3, so the cyclic directed graph modeling structure integrated in OMS, 
definitely bridges the gap between research organization and conceptual feasible models. Improve modeling flexibility by elevating concept of software encapsulation and reusability. Simplifies complex modeling user interface. Reduce computational time by enabling a further layer of implicit parallelism. And the beauty is you set up the topology, you set up the modeling solutions involved, and then you don't have to take care of the parallelization at all. Contributions, uh, my last uh, big um, conference was IMSS 2018. I had six contributions, three as a first author, two as a second author, and one co-author, and, uh, and one workshop in a three-day uh, conference. A total contribution to conferences, 27. Uh, I had one publication, this is the, the title, and I'm working on another publication, which is under review as a second author. Uh, I'm working on three publications, um, in proceedings, sorry, in proceedings, three publication was a first author, two as a co-author, and two positional papers. Ongoing work, three publication, I have a two-part paper on fans as a first author, and a paper on environmental modeling frameworks review as a second author, and the goal for this summer is to publish Mad 3 as a first author, and publish your work on the, on the, on the paper, for, for Nat3 as a first author, and hopefully Jay Swim as a second author as well.